sequence start. Three, two, one. We have a liftoff. Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys you having me. You know the me. question I got to start out with, what do you got cooking for tomorrow night? Uh, I got some good stuff. I got some tricks up my sleeve, some things that are organic to me, and some things that, uh, you know, I'll play into the underdog story a little bit. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I like that. You feel like you're the underdog of the four? Uh, probably. I mean, I, you play on the most dominant team in the league. Be careful about saying you're an underdog. Yeah, well, uh, the most dominant team has a guy that's named Giannis Antetokounmpo that dunks more than I do. Right. So he might be more known than me. There you go. I want to get to this tweet, right? So uh, you wrote that to Brewers star outfielder Christian Yelich that you should have meet up in Chicago this weekend. Is he going to be involved? Uh, yeah, he might be. Uh, oh, all you know, right. I want to make sure. Like I've I said, got a little bit. I got a little bit out of you then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll. Uh, he, he may make a celebrity appearance. We'll Ooh, see. I like that. Now you got one of the judges sitting right next to you, so you didn't bring him anything like a cake or a case of, you know. Uh, you know what? I was just gonna yes, say he's my favorite yes, player. Yes, oh, there you go. He got that there time piece on the fam right yeah. there. Oh, he did bring me. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that nice <laughs> time piece. All right. Do you guys have any dunk contest advice? I'm gonna say be wise as how you use props. Yeah. I'm one of the judges, so I don't want you to like maybe jump out there and not make the first dunk by using right. the props. So. Got it. So here's, listen, here's here's exactly. But don't be like this right that. here. Don't. Well, you know what I'm saying. I had a little 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 flare, Ooh. but but don't do this right here though. What? This? Oh, <laughs> too much stunts. We don't want you to do anything like this. <laughs> no, don't be like this. And the airplane was. I've talked to John about this. Yeah, this, this, this like is a what, bad decision. Please don't bring <laughs> nothing out like this. A little prop is okay. Be creative. Yep. yep. Complete your dunks. We don't want to see five to ten, and how many Birdman had? Or uh, Nate Robinson, it was point. like 15 tries. No, you just got to be consistent. Make see, I thought dunk. your dunk contest advice, Tracy, was going to be don't get into a dunk contest if your cousin is also in the dunk contest with you. <laughs> see, Rachel, why you had to bring that up? I'm just saying <laughs> that would be good advice. <laughs> not to remember that slam dunk contest. <laughs> I was forced and abused to get in that slam dunk contest. <laughs> I don't want to report him. I'm not telling anybody, but oh, look I'm that. just saying. Oh. <laughs> I, I watched that dunk contest. I watched that one. There you that, go. That, that was my favorite one. And by the way, he didn't miss a single dunk. No, so. yeah, not a single there you dunk. Go. Michael Jordan, no props, right? When he right. did one dunk no, contest. Right. So this you're is right. all this is all good advice. I do want to talk about the Bucks because you guys have just been dominating. 46 and 8. They have the seventh best record at the All-Star break. Um, I think of all time, right? In NBA history. Ever. Ever. Yep. Of all the seasons played, five of the six teams with a better record went on to win the NBA title. All except, oh, I don't know, it was the, the Warriors was, didn't mm. do well. But the Bulls sure the title, did. No, no. The not the Bulls best. sure did. Um, what do you think sort of as you head in, and especially about the respect you get around the league? Because we have players and other people come in and they say, oh, man, the Bucks are great. I don't know if people are scared of them. Is that fair considering, look at, I mean, look at these numbers. No, you're right. I mean, I think, you know, for us, we're used to that. Last year, I don't think anybody thought much of us, and we were able to kind of come about unexpectedly. I think the coolest part about what we've done so far this year is we've gotten everybody's best shot, and we've been able to take it one game at a time. We've been able to have that mentality that, hey, we can't accomplish our end goal by looking that far ahead. We need to take it one game at a time. We need to improve night in and night out. Uh, and that's what's gotten us to this record. And, you know, that's the mentality that we want to continue to have going into the second half of the season. You know, as a player, um, I'm, and I'm answering the question yeah. that you just asked, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at the Bucks team, and you said 
there's a lot of people looking at them and they're not scared of them. And for me to, I'm going to answer that question and I don't, this is just my opinion. I think it's because you have Giannis who's a MVP um, type player and I think he'll win it again this year. But if your best player is not a knockdown shooter and he's just a driver, if he consistently can't knock down mid-range shots from the uh, three-point line, there's really nothing to be scared of. You understand? Because in the playoffs, defenses tighten up, pressure tightens, and your best player is going to have to knock down these shots. And we have yet to see Giannis knock down open shots or take over a game from the perimeter instead of just trying to drive the ball to the basket. If you look at greats, KD, Kawhi, Kobe, I mean, these guys are knockdown shooters, and Giannis, Giannis have, you know, yet to show us that his, he's that His type threes of are obviously improving, but yes. he knows, yeah. he hears this. What, what, what is sort of the conversation between you guys when those kinds of comments come through? Uh, With Giannis, too, as I know he's working on it. Honestly, we embrace it. I mean, I'm pretty sure last year, uh, a player that I grew up idolizing said that it was over for us after game one of the uh, Eastern Conference semifinals with the Celtics. So uh, I think Giannis <laughs> is definitely improving. Oh. Uh, I think he's definitely improving his, his shooting, but I think it's the supporting cast. I don't think people have given enough credit to the supporting cast that, you know, John Horace and Coach Bud has really put around Giannis. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, if you got to worry about guys around him shooting, mm -hmm. it opens up lanes for him. So if he's able to do what he's most comfortable doing, uh, I think it's going to work out, and I think it's something that obviously no one's going to believe it until you actually Absolutely. do it. Absolutely. So right. you got to make sure you prove it. You still love Paul Pierce, though, right? <laughs> of course. I'm there still you a big fan of I like Scotty better, though. I think <laughs> oh, no, yeah, especially yeah, tomorrow. He's going to be your favorite player. Pat, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Up next, I caught up with rookie phenom Zion Williamson earlier today. Stick around for that and hear about why he might be more surprised at his success than any of us. First, though, it's time for our second distant replay of the day. This one is from this date. It's the 1990 dunk contest featuring Twitter all-star Rex Chapman. Kenny Smith and then probably D. Brown are going to be the guys to advance if, if they just do anything here. Oh! Outside, but I'll take this off. Come on. It is freezing outside, ladies and gentlemen. It's like we, three degrees. We woke up this morning and no lie that the temperature was two. Yes. Not not the wind chill. The temperature was two. There you go. I want to go over something that happened this morning. Former President Barack Obama surprised the NBA rising stars this morning at an NBA Cares event. Zion Williamson yeah. said that after getting drafted, this was the number two best moment of his life. I guess maybe he forgot that he also talked to me this morning. <laughs> I, I don't know. Here, take a listen to us. <laughs> Trace McGrady tells a really good story about how he didn't quite know how good he was coming out of high school. He got to his pre, like preseason camp, and he was like, oh, these dudes can't do this that I can do? That that's when he kind of realized. What was the point for you where you realized, hey, everything I could do in high school and college, I could also do in the NBA? Uh, It'd be a training camp as well, cause um, you know everybody come in from the summer. And, uh, it's two long weeks of just going at it, and I found myself able to translate what I did in college to training camp. And I was like, all right, it's like Trace McGrady said, um, I can compete out here. I can do this. Tracy, I love that story about you. And, and you remember that feeling? Oh, man, it's it's so real. Like, um, we were in Barbados, right, for a mini camp when I got drafted to the Raptors in 97. And we were down there, and I was watching some of the guys play and work out. And I just noticed that, you know, there were one-dimensional type players. You know, some couldn't <laughs> go left. Some couldn't <laughs> dribble left or left-hand layups. And I grew up thinking these, these guys are professionals. They're right. getting paid millions of dollars. <laughs> they could do everything. I was highly shocked. 
Did you did you so, feel that way? Uh, yes. I mean, there are players, especially back in the late '80s, early '90s, that the the game was was different. Yeah. You, know, you could be strong in one certain area, and you had a very strong chance of making the league. You could be a great rebounder, and that's what you were brought in the league to sure. do, rebound, defender. Defend. So, yes, I, I follow what this young man is saying. He came straight out of high school. Yes. He had a lot of skills. So I could see he saw past a lot of those guys. What do you think Zion's ceiling is? Does he have a ceiling? Is the ceiling the roof? The ceiling, <laughs> the ceiling is the roof. No, it, it's, it's interesting because we talked about this in the pre. That's your boy, by the way. <laughs> oh, <I know. laughs> the ceiling is the roof. In pre-draft, uh, we talk about his skill set and his stature. He's the number one player in the draft. But he plays like the number 60th pick. And I think whenever you have a talent level like that with a drive and a motor of someone who's just trying to make it in the league, that's why Giannis is the MVP and he's mm -hmm. yeah. miles ahead of like the Because he next, works so hard. Because he works hard and he plays like there's no tomorrow. Like mm -hmm. he's worried about getting cut. And the thing about Zion that I love the most, we get oohed and awed by his athleticism. But the reality is he's such a smart basketball player. When you watch him play, he's making the reads. He's making those passes. And that, to me, that's what's going to take him to the next level. The athleticism is great, but the IQ and the drive, that's what's going to put him. No, no, he's sure of himself of what he can do, mm -hmm. yeah. right? He's not out there trying to shoot threes, jumpers. No, he's doing what he does best, and it's, it's paying off. Yeah, and he's hit some threes, too, so he's out there. I want to talk about the new All-Star Game format before we go for the day. It is a lot of rule changes, <laughs> but here's the important part. Okay. For a a game where things like I don't know defense is usually yeah. optional this idea that in the fourth quarter you're gonna go to a certain score plus 24 in honor of Kobe That's Bryant defense. do you that. guys think it will be more competitive as guys basically adopt that playground model I think it's, it's gonna be great because I think all these guys want to win they want to win for Kobe but I, I just think the format the way it's set up if a team got a 10-point lead and you know that you need to score 34 points sure. and they only got to score 24 then you're going to play harder you're going to play defense mm -hmm. and um Listen. we're going to see some real professional basketball i mean it, it's quite simple when you're honoring a great like kobe mm -hmm. who left everything out on the basketball court you can't shortchange this game like you're going to have to bring it and that's just what's what's real like we honoring kobe you gotta play Right? You got to come out and you got to compete. And the other thing I'll add is these changes were in effect before Kobe passed. So there's a part of this where anytime you introduce money, I know it's going to charity, but anytime you put money on the table, NBA players get a little bit more competitive. <laughs> the Seen money the part plane, is going to be in the earlier practice. quarters, right? Yeah. The, the reset Man, the clock or the scoreboard at the second and third quarter. Forget the money. Forget the changes. We honor in one of the greats, my boy. Yes. So they better come out and be yeah. excited. There, I mean, that's just you go. there you go. We have had so much fun here in Chicago. So many great people coming through. I want to thank Michael Wilbon for being with us. I want to thank Dwayne Wade, Trey Young, Pat Cotton. Oh, happy Valentine's Day to everyone.